Hello friends, and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today, I need to make an ancient gateway. It's a major pillar for my campaign. There's four of them in my world, and the players are kind of running around the globe trying to find all four of them. They've reached the first of which so far, and opened it up, but they have three to go, and they're kind of closing in on the second one. So... What I need to do is have something in front of them because uh, the other three I intend to be major set piece encounters. So I want to have a major set piece to put in front of them. And uh, I need something to represent that. So I'm going to make myself a gateway. Feel free to follow along if you like. I'm going to detail all the steps. Uh, a lot of techniques I've used before but in uh, kind of new interesting ways. So let's, get into, let's just get down to business. Okay, so the main part of this build is going to be using these uh, line of lights that I got at the dollar store. Super cheap. But there's a bunch of them and they come on this like wire. You just put a couple batteries in the bottom. I'm going to use some insulation foam here to build kind of a frame for them to sit in. And this will be kind of the archway of our gate. I'm using two inch thick blue stuff. But also uh, one inch thick pink stuff for the base. So I'm going to use a coffee pot there to draw a perfect circle on this and then I'm just going to start uh, freehanding these archways. I want it to be more or less symmetrical uh, but I am using a ruler to make sure I kind of make everything the same size. But as far as the general shape of this thing, I'm just freehanded. So it's going to be two long dragon necks that kind of come up and meet in the middle. So I'm just going to freehand the heads on there. And once I have a shape I'm satisfied with, I'm going to move on to the base. So that's about 8 inches wide, and this base is going to be about 10 inches wide. And I'm just going to make it a square. So I'm going to use my triangle here to make sure that my corners are perfect. And once I've got that all drawn out, I'm going to pull out the proxon and just start cutting this up. You could use a knife for this, but I have the prox on and it's a great tool, so I figured I might as well. Sometimes I like to show you guys that I'm just going to use a knife, but uh, for this one I figured the prox on would make my life easier, especially on the archway here. So I'm just going to cut off the excess and then just start running along the lines that I traced. It doesn't have to be perfect because this thing's going to be made of stone and I want it to look ancient and old and kind of weathered. So I'm okay if it's not perfect, but pretty happy with the drawing that I put on there, so I'd like to get as close to it as possible. Okay, so once I got those cut out, I'm going to put the procs on away, and I'm going to take out my pen and start marking this thing up. I want to have a couple stairs at the front, and I'm just going to trace where I feel like the gateway is going to line up there. So those two rectangles at the edge are where the base of the gate would be. I just kind of eyeballed it. So I want the corners of this to be curved, not just 90 degree angles. So I'm going to use this uh, circle jig that I have just to make sure they're all the same. And like I said before, I don't want them to be perfect. Uh, so I'm okay cutting them out with the knife here. And I want them to look a little, you know, weather worn. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to put a grid on this. So I'm just going to measure out an uh, inch by inch grid on the sides and then start lining it up. Okay, so now that I've got my grid, I figure I should thin this archway a bit because uh, I want it to look a little more rounded, a little more natural. Right now it's pretty wide because that's kind of how I wanted the base to be, or how wide I wanted the base to be. And I figured it's easier to cut away than it is to add to it after. 
So I'm just going to take my pen and start marking out increments about where I want it to line up and then I'm just going to start shaving off the edges with my knife. So I was being pretty careful about not trying to put too much pressure on this thing because the middle is a bit of a weak point. Uh, but my brain slipped and at some point I just forgot I was doing that and I pressed down on it and snapped it in half. So uh, not the end of the world, just glued it back together. Uh, but this actually made it easier to carve. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I was trying to not break it. So I sh uh, shave it down to the general shape that I want and then I'm just going to test fit these lights because I want to hide the battery pack in the base and I want uh, to string the lights up and around and kind of put them inside the archway. So I'm just marking out where I want this battery pack to go and then I'm going to cut out that area with my knife. Very careful not to go all the way through here. Um, but in hindsight, I don't think it's really that important. Um, this area is kind of hidden by the archway and it's a bit of a pain to try and cut this out without going all the way through. You end up like picking out a lot of little bits of foam and it's very like jagged and uh, it's not like smooth on the inside. So it's hard to get the battery pack to fit in there snug. And uh, I think at the end of the day mine kind of peeks out a little bit at the bottom so that's not quite uh, flat. So I probably would just cut all the way through this uh, if I was to do this project again. So I marked out where I want the cord to go through from this and then I just start threading it through to make sure it fits. So because I want this cord to hide inside the foam of both the archway and the base, I kind of cut out a trench for it I, and I just do this by cutting it like a 45 degree angle one way and then a 45 degree angle the other way. And I do that on the base and on the arch. So I take a pen here and I just kind of mark out the rough middle of this and uh, draw it on so that I can kind of follow that line with my knife. I'm just making sure to sharpen my knife before these precise cuts because there's nothing worse than trying to cut foam with a dull knife. So before I start putting in the uh, wires, I'm going to cut the stairs out here at the front. So I want this to be uh, three steps. So the first step will be slightly elevated, the second step will be a little more elevated, and then the third step will be the same height as the rest of the piece. So I just kind of eyeball it on the side of the foam with my ruler and draw a straight line and then I start cutting out those stairs individually. And I'm okay if that's a little rough because this gateway is supposed to be thousands of years old. So. So while I'm at it, I'm going to take the knife and just start carving up the edges of this thing because it's too perfect. want it to look worn and torn. So I do this by uh, just cutting big chunks off or uh, stabbing into it with my knife and then kind of ripping the knife out uh, to create more of like a natural break. And once that's done, I'm going to take some tin foil and just roll it all over this to give it a good texture. 
I'm going to go back with the pen now and just read, uh, trace my grid. And I'm pressing pretty hard here just to indent it into the foam. So I've broken up some pieces of uh, foam here just with my fingers and fingernails to make uh, like rough rock chunks and uh, I'm just gluing them kind of wherever I see fit around this thing. Okay so now that I've done all of my work to the foam I'm going to finally glue the battery pack in and then uh, pull the lights through the hole that I had cut before. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this cord and we're going to start gluing it into the trenches that we've carved. So I'm going to I'm going to go clockwise around this thing and uh, just start gluing it every like three or four inches or so because I don't want it to be bulky and I want it to hide in that trench as much as possible. So I'm going to stretch it three or four inches, put a bead of glue, hold it there while it dries, and then repeat that. Because this cord is pretty long and there's a lot of lights on it, the final result will have, you know, lights on the sides, lights on the top, lights on the bottom. But it's a bit of a process to get it there. A lot of rotating this piece, gluing, rotating, gluing. So once I've got it up the first half of the arch, I'm going to glue the second half of the arch onto the piece. So I put a bit of white glue on the nose of the dragon so that it can glue back together and I put some hot glue on the base and then I'm gonna put a bead of hot glue on both uh, the connection at the bottom and I'm also holding the cord of the lights there so it's kinda of doing double duty the lights are getting glued to the archway but the lights are also holding the archway together while the white glue dries So this step uh, was probably the most tedious step of the whole build and uh, there's an old cosplayer trick that people use when using a lot of hot glue and they want it to dry fast uh, where they hold a uh, can of uh, air upside down and the like freezing cold liquid uh, shoots out and dries the hot glue instantly. Uh, that is something that might work for doing this so you don't have to spend so much time holding the lights in place while they dry because I uh, didn't want them to move around. I did not do that so this took me a decent amount of time for sure. As I start getting closer to finishing this and I'm running out of lights, uh, I'm being conscious of where the lights are falling as I stretch them out. Up until now I had just been kind of letting them, uh, gluing them where they fall, so to say. Uh, but now that it's starting to get finished, I'm noticing like gaps where the lights are uh, not lining up perfectly and I'm actually just kind of backtracking and putting the lights where I want them uh, and kind of putting extra glue on where the cords overlap to hold it down. Okay, so that's finally done. Uh, well worth it though, I think the result looks great and I turn off the lights here so you can see just how bright it is. Really happy with the result. Okay, so the I did not put enough glue on the battery pack the first time. So I'm gonna load up the bottom of it with hot glue this time, now that I'm done, and put it back in. And I'm gonna take the cap off and use some white glue and a toothpick to really push it in the edges. Uh, I, the reason I take the cap off is because I don't want to glue the cap closed in case I need to replace these batteries eventually. And then once I'm sure that that's not going to uh, glue the cap closed, I put the cap back on. Alright, so now that that's all glued in place, I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and start carving up the archway to be a little more uh, slender shaped. And I'm define the heads of the dragons a little more. 
The reason I didn't do this before gluing is because I wanted it to be sturdy while I was gluing it and I wasn't exactly sure how much space the uh, lights and the cords were going to take up and I didn't want to cut them too small before doing that. So I'm going to take my pen and kind of draw onto the heads of the dragons where I kind of want it to line up because I, I want to give it uh, like more slender at the nose and then more wide at the base of the head. I'm imagining like the uh, the fins coming out of the sides of their heads and I'm carving those in too. Okay, so once I'm done carving it up, I'm satisfied with the result. I'm going to take some tin foil and texture it. So here's an interesting part. We want to hide these lights, but we want to show them. So I'm using a piece of paper to kind of draw up a template of how much space the gate actually takes up. I'm going to cut that piece of paper out and then I'm going to trace it onto uh, a page protector. So this is not like a, a thick page protector, this is very flimsy but it's see-through and it's big enough for two of these. So I'm going to trace it on with the sharpie and then I'm going to use hot glue around the edge to kind of uh, define the space and then I'm going to use hot glue, hot glue from the middle kind of in a spiral pattern coming out to give this portal some texture and also diffuse the light a little bit from these, uh, these LEDs. Alright, so once that's dry, I'm going to cut it out with a knife. And the edges don't have to be perfect on this because we're going to be using more hot glue to actually glue it into place. So I'll test fit it just to make sure that that worked, and then I'll do it again for the other side. All right, so I set that aside to dry, and I was thinking to myself that I really want to give these dragons kind of a scale pattern. So I tried drawing it on with a pen, and I realized it was going to take me all day, and I did not want to do that. So what I've got here is a, uh, a, a jig for attaching frames to walls, and it's a little metal piece that's kind of got a V shape on it. So as you can see in those test pieces there, I tried it out on some scrap foam, was really happy with the results, and so I brought it over to my, my dragons, and I'm just making a scale pattern by pressing this into the foam repeatedly. This worked really well, really happy with the results, but I need to come up with a better way if I want to do this in the future because I felt like my thumb was going to fall off by the end of this process. So after finishing the first dragon, I tried to put on a couple of latex gloves uh, to maybe protect my thumb a little bit. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know if it really made a difference, but it made me feel a little better about it. Okay, very satisfied with how that turned out. Time to cut out the other portal and start gluing them in place. So I decide which one I like better and I'm going to put that on the front. So I'll take the back piece, put that in place, and then just start dragging hot glue around the edge of it. This actually did a really good job of holding it in place. I'm kind of surprised. I thought that I might have to uh, come up with a better solution to hold it, but the hot glue actually bonded really well with the foam and the other hot glue, I guess. 
and uh, so put the back in place and then I'm going to take some stuffing and uh, this is a common technique that I use to diffuse light in uh, anything that I want to light up. So I'm just going to take a decent piece and put it in place, test fit it, and then put the front uh, hot glue piece on and then sandwich that in there and use some hot glue to hold it in place. All right, so once that's dry, just gonna test the lights here, and that's kind of what she looks like. Pretty happy with that. It's uh, it looks really good in the dark too. Okay, so now it's time to coat this thing. So I'm just using black craft paint and Mod Podge the black magic base code if you watch black magic craft this has become such a staple of my building process now I will never go back to not doing this it gives it such a nice protective shell holds everything together if it was necessarily weak before and uh, it takes paint super well so shout out to you Jeremy change of my life I didn't mask off the portal uh, because I like to live dangerously. Okay, so left that overnight to dry and now I'm coming back with some gray. So I actually ran out of gray paint so I just mixed some black and white together. but. I'm intending this to be like a dark gray, like a deep gray. I think if you're just buying bottles of craft paint is what it's called. So I'm just gonna hit this whole thing. Uh, I've watered down the paint quite a bit so it can kind of get into the nooks and crannies without me having to do too much work. I'm just gonna start with the rocks and then uh, kind of, when I paint I like to hit the difficult areas first and then hit like the flat easy areas afterwards. I'm not sure if that's more efficient but it feels better while I'm doing it. So I actually took a break there and uh, came back a couple hours later. So that's why the base is dry and the top is not. This does dry pretty quick though. Okay, so once that's all good, I'm gonna take a sponge and some taupe, I believe this color is called. It's like a very yellowy, um, brownish earth tone. I'm so I'm going to cover the sponge in that and I'm just going to start dabbing this thing very sporadically. I don't want to get total coverage on it, but I do kind of want to get uh, a decent amount on the highlight areas of this thing. So it looks a little dramatic right now, but I'm going to take some gray, some light gray, and just dry brush this whole thing. So the taupe kind of acts as like a nice... Uh, color to break this thing up so it, it looks a little more natural once it all is said and done. So this light gray is going to hit all the highlights, make this look a little more natural, especially on the areas where we carved in a lot of detail like the scales of the dragon necks. And then once I'm done that I'm going to take my homemade black wash 
but it does have a bit of brown in it, so it's kind of like a dark, dark brown. And I'm just going to coat this whole thing in it. So after I've coated the whole thing, I'm going to use my brush and kind of sop up a bit of the areas where it pools. And then once it's dry, I'm going to take a suede and I'm going to dry brush uh, not the whole thing, just the tops and where kind of light's hitting this. So I'm going to hit the tops of the rocks and the edges of it, the uh, edges of the stairs, kind of anywhere where I've put like a big crack, I'm going to hit both edges of it. And then uh, I'm going to hit the, uh, the necks of the dragons as well. And that'll really bring out all that scale detail. And then for the final step, I'm going to use some straight white and I'm going to dry brush that on only the tops of the dragons and the kind of apex of their necks and then the tops of the rocks. And then I'll spray coat this in some varnish to protect it and we're done. And that's it friends, that's all there is to this build. An ancient gateway. I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out and I know I'm gonna get at least a few uses out of this. Normally I don't like to build these giant set pieces because I kind of have to throw them out when I'm done with them. But for this, at least I know I'm getting a couple, getting a couple table sessions with it. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any techniques that uh, would change up this build, I'd love to hear those too. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you had a good time, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.